What's up Dirt Tracks fans, Luke here bringing you guys another walk around video, this time of a vehicle that I actually have tested and, and driven, I've already done the test ride on this thing, but uh, we missed doing a walk around on it, so I'm bringing it to you now. Basically what we've got here is the 2023 Razor Pro R4. This is the ultimate, this is the top, top, top dog in performance side-by-sides in the industry right now. Um, this is the, I said the ultimate, but this is actually the ultimate edition, which means that it has Dynamics DV. So basically there's the premium is the base model, why you'd call premium the base model, I don't understand that, but premium, ultimate, then Troy Lee. And uh, the difference between the premium and the ultimate, like we have, the only difference is live valve. So we'll talk more about this, or I guess Dynamics DV, live valve shocks, Dynamics DV, gotta get that right. So let's just start by talking a little bit about the chassis. Obviously this is the four seat version, so it is a mile long. And what's interesting is the two seat version was already really long for a two seater, but when you add in that second row of seats, it gets even longer. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the longest four seat side by side in the industry right now. I haven't checked all of them, but the wheelbase is ridiculous. And that's the right word for it, it is ridiculous. It has a decent enough turning radius given how, how long it actually is. But don't fool yourself into thinking that you're gonna be snaking in and out of trees because you're not going in tight places with this thing. It's just simple as that. Now it's a 74 inch wide side-by-side, -side, so it is the widest side-by-side -side in the industry right now. That's awesome, it is so stable. I love that about it. It's got 22 inches of front end and 24 inches of rear end travel. That's actual wheel travel, not what Polaris lists as usable wheel travel. I still haven't figured out what that means and I just don't care. Actual wheel travel is what matters. It's what everybody else measures their travel by. So that's what we're gonna measure it on this one as well. That's what we're gonna talk about. So that's still really impressive travel numbers. Um, there's nothing to, to be ashamed about there. Obviously you've got these massive um, A-arms up front. They are arched and a ridiculously huge <laughs> trailing arm rear suspension out here out back. One of the, the neat features of this vehicle, I think that they, Oh, they, they made obvious on the two-seater that we have, but they haven't made it obvious on this, is that your tow link is actually running through the, the trailing arm. Uh, I think that's a really cool design feature. I'm not 100%, well, I know why they do it. They do it so that as the wheel goes through its travel, the toe doesn't change uh, of, of the actual wheel itself. So the, having that triangulated the way they have geometrically makes more sense, works better. Um, out back, you've got it is a four link system, so out back you've got your links back here and they are massively beefy, obviously arched, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff going on back here. Now one thing that when you have your tow link running from the front to the back the way they do through the, the trailing arm is you don't have a second link back here. Um, sometimes you have all three of your links here. They have another one sitting kind of here, you don't. So this is just very sparse back here, your drive shaft and your upper and lower links, so that's kind of cool. You can see on this model, if you just zoom in here a little bit, while they have done a bit of a job of trying to deflect crap off of the front wheels, if you run in gravel at all or any kind of like loose sand with rocks in it, your drive shaft, all of your links get like sanded like crazy. Um, I wouldn't say this very often, but I honestly think if I owned this, I'd put a set of mud flaps, like wide ones on the front because it just, everything gets sanded down. Even your, like these are, this is all just, rock strikes all along here and this thing's brand new i've only ridden it for basically i think four days we've had this out and did very terrain but like this thing is like sanded so anyway something to think about um i'm i'm gonna address a couple things right now because if you watched our walk around on the two-seater or even the test ride on the two-seater we had a couple problems with that unit right out of the box the first one was our one rear shock reservoir came loose on the top of the shock it rotated around and rubbed on the on the um, the sway bar link at the top and did some damage to the the shock reservoir. This one we've had no problems with in that area. It's been tight, no issues. Uh, the other thing we had problems with on our two seater was the shift linkage screwed up on us. I have no confidence that this one is not going to do the same thing. Now we had our two seater fixed and it has never given us a problem since, but this one has a shift linkage that feels like super mushy it doesn't want to go into drive when you're 
if you have any kind of pressure on it, and I'm worried about yanking on it because the last time I did that on the other one, it, it creased the line and then it wouldn't shift at all. So I really think Polaris needs to do something with the shift linkage on these Pro R's because it's not confidence inspiring. And if you do bend it, get it messed up like we did, you're basically out of luck shifting, which brings me to another point that's important because those two things are connected. This vehicle has a start interlock. It will not start unless it's in park. So if you do get your shift linkage messed up and you can't get it into park, you can't start it. And that's a problem. The other reason that's a problem is because every time you start it, you have to shift into park, which means you're shifting the linkage more and more and more. And I feel like that's not, not the reason it's messed up. There's other reasons, but it doesn't help when you're trying to be gentle with it and you're trying to not mess things up. That's a lot of talk about problems. Um, so don't get me wrong. I love this thing and it's an amazing vehicle, but there are some things about it. The other thing we had problems with was the rear wheels got basically wrecked because they had those, I don't know if you guys remember, but go back and watch that video. They had little metal deflectors inside the wheels that were designed to kind of keep mud and stuff from building up inside the rim. So they basically, they were maybe a centimeter away from the edge of the rim, bolted onto the bottom of the hub, and they just kind of were supposed to scrape mud from the inside of the rim as it rotated. What happened was rocks got caught in those and then ground away at the rim to the point where we actually had a rim fail. So we took them off of that vehicle, problem solved. We took them off of this vehicle before we even drove it, haven't had a problem with that. So that was a, an easy solution. Unless you're gonna run in crazy mud or if you're just running in sand where there's no rocks, I'd say take those off right away because they're, they're not gonna do you any favors if you run in gravel or any kind of rocky terrain. So moving along here, obviously, again, four-seater. Uh, this one has just the regular fenders on it. Our two-seater, we put wide fenders. It doesn't matter whether you put wide fenders or short fenders. Because this wheel sticks out so far outside the body of the vehicle, you're gonna get roosted. You're just, you're just constantly getting roosted with mud. Um, we put on our two-seater the, the door finisher, bottom finisher part in here. Didn't help at all. I still got covered in mud. So just something to think about, um, you know, if you, if you want to stay clean, the only way to do it is to put some sort of full upper door on here. It's the only, the only way. Otherwise, you're going to get muddy. Uh, again, I wonder if you could like, have a mud flap, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, something to think about. Cool design features. I think this thing looks really, really great. I think it's an awesome looking side by side. It looks tough. It looks mean. It should because <laughs> it's expensive. Um, you've got projector headlights, LEDs with accent lighting here in the headlights. It looks really cool. This is also an accent strip along here. It gives the vehicle a really tough, mean look from the front um, when the lights are on. This pod up here, this is actually not just for looks. This has intakes for your CVT and your engine right in here. So you've got extra cooling coming from this pod all the way to the back to where the CVT is. Um, so it's something to think about. It actually adds, what do they say, like 30% more cooling to your CVT because of this extra vent. This isn't the only vent. There's another one at the back as well, but they cool the CVT extra, which is a great idea because you have 225 horsepower on tap here with this great big four cylinder, two liter engine, naturally aspirated. This thing is an absolute animal. There's no way to, to state it any other, any different way. That, that's it, it is an animal to drive. You can drive this with the throttle. You don't ever have to even steer it. You just hit the gas and it starts to slide and you just counter steer and go around a corner. It's utterly impressive. And I think in a four seater that's this big and in kind heavy, this engine is just perfectly paired because you know you have as much power to weight ratio here as a lot of other two seat high performance side-by-side, -side, sport side-by-sides because of the extra horsepower. So that's a pretty impressive sort of feat of engineering when you think about that with the weight, but you got more horsepower. Obviously you have a really unique uh, two and two into one, which makes two into one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exhaust. There's actually two separate headers. Um, the outside cylinders go into, go into a single, then the inner cylinders go into a single, then those two singles go into the can and meet it right up here at the, the exhaust can. It's a really nice exhaust system. It looks really nice. I've already seen and everybody already knows it's easy to put a turbo on it because everything's right here and it's been done. Um, into a single exit exhaust here at the back that looks really good. This is a very stylish exhaust. I really like how it looks. Players has done a great job with that. Um, moving around the back, LED tail lights with accent lighting again. Here's your intake for one side is your, your CVT, one side is your engine. I don't know which is which, but so those are your other intakes up here with frog skin covers on them, which is nice. Um, cargo box, 
Good size cargo box, definitely a good size cargo box. Um, it does have a liner in it, like a kind of, see if you can show it, a little rubber cargo box liner, which is cool. Uh, you have tie down points here and then D-ring loops here. And Polaris sells a ton of different accessories to drop right in here with your lock and ride mounts. There's lock and ride mounts along the sides up here. There's all kinds of stuff you can put in here. Um, you can make it double level with a wheel holder, or cargo boxes, whatever. So it's pretty versatile, but it is a really good size cargo box. You can actually haul stuff in it um, out for the day in the dunes or out on the trail. You got lots of space for your stuff. So that's really nice that Polaris did that. The roof is standard. All uh, Pro R's get roofs. So that's not uh, a feature that you get with the Ultimate. It just comes standard. Um, the doors again are standard as well. And uh, they're, they're good doors. They don't rattle. They're pretty tight. Um, the latches are in the front and the doors open suicide style. Um, it's something you get used to. I'm not crazy about it. I prefer an outside latch and I much prefer a latch that's where it should be, but that then the door would open weird because these don't open the right way. So something to think about. Um, but you know, they do open nice and wide for getting in. So that's good. Uh, we talked about the Kawasaki was I think the last walk around story I did. And one thing I, I said I loved about it was that this level here was down by your feet. There was no extra sort of ledge to walk over. This vehicle has a ledge both front and rear. And it's quite an aggressive one. You step down into it when you walk over. So something to think about, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not hard to get in and out of, but it is one extra thing. You have to lift your feet way up. If you're say on a weird hill, a rock or whatever, it can be kind of difficult. You almost got to grab the roll bar and sort of hike yourself up into it because you do have to get up so high. But again, not a big issue. So let's talk about the rear seat. The rear seat on this vehicle is actually pretty interesting. Obviously you've got high back bolstered seats. These are really, really good seats. You even got a little head deflector rest thing here. Um, handlebar in the front of you. It has this cover, but this is for, I, I'll climb in here so you guys can see. Might as well. So there's this cover right here, but this is for the, the six point retractable harnesses in the front. This isn't a, for your for like the passenger. This is just a steel bar. I say this over and over. There's no reason why you couldn't put a rubber cover on this steel bar to make gripping it better to make it more comfortable. Um, if you're a smaller person and you're riding around in this thing, it is possible you can bang your head off this, your helmet, because you're gonna be wearing a helmet. So having this with foam or something would be better. So few side-by-side -side companies are doing that and I don't understand why. Um, it would just make it look more finished. So that's one small thing, but it is comfortable back here. I'm 6'1", and I wouldn't say I have lots of room, but I'm not uncomfortable. So that's a good thing, that's nice. Um, the footwell areas are pretty deep. They have lots of drainage in them. There's really not a lot to say about the seating back here. Uh, you do have an outlet right here um, for 12 volt. So if you want to, uh, you can put an adapter in there for USB or you know, plug in your 12 volt coffee maker, whatever. Have a cappuccino on the trail. Uh, now the rear of this vehicle has something very unique about it. And uh, I'm gonna try and show you at least on one side. It's difficult to do and it might take me a minute, but I'm gonna show you anyway. The rear of this vehicle, Polaris has thought very carefully about. And they realized that not everyone carries a passenger all the time in the back. Not everyone carries four people or even three people in their side by side all the time. So this oftentimes for people who buy a four seater to use it occasionally for four seaters, this becomes semi wasted space. But Polaris has come up with a solution to that in the form of convertible rear seating. So just like that, both seats do it. I'm only gonna show you one because it's time consuming, but both seats do this. You have a flat floor in the back. They sell a cargo mat thing back here to make it even flatter. There are lock and ride points here. There's tie down latches here and here if you need to use them. This makes the rear of this thing so versatile and useful. You can put tons of gear back here. I'm talking tons of gear. Combine that with the, with the cargo box. And this thing actually will hold almost as much as your typical utility side-by-side. -side. No, obviously you're not gonna fill the back with gravel. It's not meant for that. But if it's just you and the wife going out for a camping trip or going out for a couple day ride or whatever, you can store everything you could possibly need for four or five days out on the trail right in here, no problem. And it's protected, it's kept out of the elements. The doors are gonna protect it. It's not hanging out the back. It's such a great way of doing things. Let's say you've got a dog, a big dog 
and you need some space for the dog or whatever. There's tons of space back here. And as you can see, if you have three people, you can only fold down one side if you want and you have all of this extra space. The other thing this does, and I can't, I can't show you because I don't wanna take the other seat off, but these little latches here, just quarter turns all along here, remove this panel, which allows you to access the front side of the motor and the CVT even easier, right here. So all of your engine is accessible. It's super easy to get to and just a great way for doing maintenance, great great feature for doing maintenance and, and making the engine compartment accessible. The other thing I noticed when I was looking at this the other day is that this is actually carpeted semi sound deadening material. It's not like sound deadening, but this is the kind of stuff you find in the, in the fender wells of your truck. And it is designed for sound deadening purposes. So that's kind of a neat thing. Polaris didn't leave this unfinished or just used plastic that's gonna be noisy. This will actually deaden sound. So that's pretty cool that they've done that and they've thought that far ahead. Um, these seat belts here, uh, they don't come completely unlatched. This side, the, the, the four points here and here do, um, but you can just move these out of the way or, or get them out of the way if you need to, if you're gonna fold this down. So that's how the rear end works. And to put it back to four passenger mode, you just move these out of the way, clip the seat back in and you're good to go and, and do these back up, um, which is very simple. You just latch them in like that and you're good to go. So that's, a, that's how it works. I'm very impressed. Polaris has done something here. You know, you've got vehicles like, um, you know, like the Talon that had convertible seating and you've got other four seat side-by-sides that have convertible seating. Uh, but in terms of pure sport side-by-sides, this is probably the best that I've ever seen it done. Uh, and, and Polaris deserves to have some good props for that. Let's move on and we'll talk a little bit about features. So just general features. As I said before, you have six point harnesses front and rear. The rears are not retractable. These ones are solid mounted at the back. The front ones are retractable six point harnesses. These are installed from the factory and they are very comfortable, very useful. I'm gonna put this just back in here like that. <clears throat> so moving up front, again, I said retractable six point harnesses right here. Um, basically what it means is that you can set up your harnesses for your size and getting in and out, you just pull on this. It's not difficult like it is. And anyone who's worn five or six point harnesses knows they can be a pain to get over your shoulders and get yourself strapped in. This makes it so easy. Um, a vehicle like this, I think should come with six point harnesses cause you're going really fast. Um, you've got a ROP certified roll cage, so it's, you know, safe. It actually will protect you. Um, but let's climb inside here. I'll show you how I fit anyway at 6'1". These seats are six-way adjustable. So you've got height adjustment, forward and back, and angle adjustment, um, which is really cool. You can really tailor the seating position for your height, for your size, um, you know, obviously forward and back for your, the length of your legs. Cockpit is typical. This is the same as Pro R's and Pro S's. Uh, it's all the same stuff. Your shifter's here. You have park-in shifter, uh, park-in transmission rather, cup holders here. A little storage bin up here that is pretty useless. Um, you got a bin up here that is actually useful and has a place to charge your phone as well as it has the outlet for doing updates to your 7S display, which we'll talk about. And then you've got a trunk right here, again, that is pretty useful. It's actually quite deep, uh, but I would not put anything. These, these trunks do have rubber seals, but I wouldn't trust those rubber seals to necessarily be waterproof. I would say that they're probably water resistant, but I wouldn't be storing any super sensitive stuff in here. Um, even though they're up high, I think they could probably still get wet. Um, passenger grab handle is a really nice one. They've done a good job with this given multiple hand positions, really grippy. And everybody knows who watches me do these things. I love it when they don't rattle and this one does not rattle. It is adjustable, but it doesn't rattle. So that's great. Um, there's lots of room here for my legs. I feel very comfortable. I'm not crunched in here. Same with the passenger. They have even more because they don't have any pedals. Um, but there's lots of space in here for a tall driver, tall passenger. That's, uh, that's not a problem. Let's talk about the dashboard because that's where really with this vehicle, the magic kind of happens. So along with uh, your Ride Command 7 inch display, which is what this is here, and it'll click on here in a minute, you get to see the home screen with your little video that shows you what you could be doing, but probably you aren't. Um, you get all kinds of features that are included with this. So you get uh, your GPS mapping, uh, which is here. Uh, it's not showing any maps because we're not in a mappable area right now, but you get GPS mapping, which also gives you, like, you get the group ride. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see all the maps in there now, um, but you get group ride. So anybody who has this display in their side-by-sides, if it's even if it's not a Pro, Pro R, if it's like a, an older version that has this in it, um, 
you can connect to them, they can see you, you can see them, you can see how fast they're going, you can send messages to their screen through this, no cell service required. It's a great system, really, really great system, especially if you're riding in more open, fast areas where you tend to stay further apart because of dust. Um, you don't have to wait at every corner because they can see where you turn. You just follow them, follow the leader basically is all it takes. Uh, and it also is really useful too, if, if you're riding and you turn around and your buddy's not behind you, you can check on him on the screen and see, is he moving, is he not moving? If he's not moving, you know that there's been a problem and you can send him a message and, and you know figure out what's going on. So that's really handy. I love this display, obviously. Uh, you have your gauges here, we've got our dynamics gauge. So this is showing you dynamics DV, it's showing us all the different settings as I go up through the settings it changes and we'll talk a bit more about Dynamics TV in a minute. Um, here you've got your phone so this is all of your phone settings you can make calls right from here um, take calls from here you can get texts on here you can go to the keypad and like dial a number uh, right from here and and get a phone call it's pretty neat messages for your texts it's pretty pretty cool setup. Your music ses system, so this vehicle being the ultimate version has a Rockford Fosgate Stage 2 stereo in it. It's got tweeters up here, components here and here, components behind the passenger seats, um, as well as a two or 400 watt amp. The only thing this one doesn't have is the subwoofer, but it, it is available on as an accessory and it's available in the next level. I'm pretty sure, maybe it does have the subwoofer. It's hard to tell on Polaris' site. Sometimes they don't list things perfectly, but anyway, it's there. Here's your screen for your settings. So you've got all different settings here. Um, you've got a media viewer, so you can like look at pictures and stuff if they're plugged into your USB port, which I think is hilarious. Um, yeah, controls for your, your display, notification center for any kind of like warning codes or anything like that that's coming up. So lots of information that you can have with this display. Uh, it's a great system. I really, really like it. Now in your gauges as well, there's multiple different gauge setups. So I can have it, these, these screens or my dynamic screen. And this is all customizable. There's two different versions of your speedometer and tachometer on this side, as well as all of these little widgets here are all customizable for whatever you want. I think there's like 10 or 12 different widgets you can pick from and lay them out however you want. So that's pretty neat. Now we will talk about Dynamics. Dynamics DV is Polaris's new dynamic system. So their second generation dynamic system that does compression and rebound adjustability independently on all four shocks. And it's constantly automatically adjusting them as you ride. You have four settings, used to be three, and the four settings are comfort, track, rock, and Baja. Now, I said this in my test ride, so you'll wanna watch that to see, but here's how this works. Yes, they've given them names. No, it doesn't matter. The names are, are irrelevant. You're going to use each of those settings how you see fit, and you should go through them and use them as you're riding and check what each one does and how it makes the vehicle handle, how it adjusts or, or affects the, the stability of the vehicle, the ride quality. You might use Baja for trail riding because that's how you prefer the vehicle to handle or ride. You might use rock crawling while you're just trail riding because you like the settings better. The, the setting names, in my opinion, are, are irrelevant, as I said. Um, so just use them how you see fit. I tend to use track when I'm going fast on a road and I pretty much always ride in comfort if I'm just trail riding because it is the smoothest setting. Um, obviously, I'm adjusting them from here on the, on the steering wheel. Polaris is, well, I think they're the only company right now who actually has steering wheel controls. Um, up and down does your four different Dynamics DV settings. Um, this is the oh crap button. And when you push it, uh, we'll go to the dynamic screen and you can see how it works. So when I push this button, if you watch the screen, it puts compression to full firm for, I think it's three seconds. And if I hold it, I can hold it as long as I want. And it will keep compression at full firm as long as I hold this button down. So what that does is it allows you to ride in comfort where it's the smoothest, softest ride but if you see a huge crater or if you're coming up and there's a washout or some crazy thing coming up, you literally, as you're riding, just push this button, full compression, bam, I hit that bump. It absorbs the bump better and doesn't kill me. And then boom, I'm back to comfort again immediately afterwards. So it's a really cool system. Polaris has done a great job with that. And uh, it's one of those things that once you have it and you start using it, you can never be without it. So um, yeah, you'll, you'll get used to it and you'll love it just like I do. So continuing on with the steering wheel here with the controls, on this side I've got volume, play pause, I can take calls from here and then this little button with the Polaris logo on it, it allows me to custom, custom label that button to do a bunch of different things. Usually it'll just take you to a different screen on the, on the main screen of your gauge, but uh, 
yeah, so that's what that does. But it's all nicely integrated into the steering wheel and it all is very useful. I really like it and how it works. Funny kind of thing that Polaris does that I really like as well though, is that they don't skimp out on other gauges. So yes, you've got this screen in the dash. Yes, you've got all kinds of information up here that you might want, but you also have this screen that stays the same for everything. So you've got your speed, your tack, uh, and then this gauge down here does your trip meters, gives you your engine temps, gives you all that kind of information, your fuel on one side, a clock in the middle, your four by four settings, it's all right here. So you're never without, this does tilt with the steering wheel and it does not telescope the way this, the steering wheel telescopes, it stays stationary, but it does tilt. Um, so that's, that's, I think that's really cool. You don't have to rely on this screen. And I don't like looking over to a center console to see what's going on with my engine, with my speed, whatever. I like to look straight ahead of me. So that's a really good feature. So you basically, you've got your light switch here, you got your four by four selector switch here, three modes, and then on the dashboard that you can't see right now, but on the dashboard right here above the shifter is your throttle modes. This is drive-by wire. It's an invisible drive-by wire, meaning that you can't tell it's drive-by wire when you're driving it. It works amazing that way. But you have three settings. You have uh, sport, rock, and race. Now, in my experience, sport is where you spend all of your time. Rock is great for situations where you want to go really smooth with the throttle, filter out all of those unnecessary throttle inputs with your foot, and just basically have a really mellow riding experience. It's actually really good if you've got kids in the back, so it's not jerking their head as you're, ta as you're accelerating and, and slowing down. Race is a little bit more aggressive than sport, definitely, but not to the point where I'm like, wow, this is totally different and I have to be in race if I want to go fast. It, it is more aggressive, but it's marginal in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I spend most of my time in sport, but you do have that option. Um, that's basically the, the driver compartment here. And I guess the last thing I should talk about would be wheels and tires. This thing has 32 inch Rampage Fury, um, Maxxis Rampage Fury tires. These are a great all round tire. They do pretty much everything well. Um, they handle good on fast roads. They are decent in like slick muddy conditions. They're good for trail riding, they're durable. They're obviously 32s. You can see the side lugs on them are massive so you get wicked side bite. They're mounted to a 15 inch aluminum rim. It's a really nice looking rim, but it's not a beadlock. And I say this in the, in the test ride as well, so you'll see that, you'll see me reiterate this more than once. This should have beadlock wheels. This is an exceptionally powerful, heavy, fast, aggressive side-by-side. -side. This thing wants to be cornered hard, especially in the long version when that rear end is just like drifting behind you somewhere. It's so far back there, you don't even know where it is. I just feel like this model should have bead locks. Now, if you step up to the Troy Lee edition, it does have bead locks. So um, I just feel like the Ultimate should have bead locks as well. I think that was a miss on Polaris's part, and I think that needs to change. However, the tires are awesome, and I really, really like them. And I haven't had any problems with the beads um, coming off. I just see that if you are an aggressive rider in certain scenarios, you might. Um, now, the last point I'm going to make is something that I know you guys talk a lot about and complain about. There's a certain group of you who get upset about it for some unknown reason, is the price. Look, this is not a cheap side-by-side, -side, okay? It's just not. Uh, the, the premium edition, the, the one below this, is still not a cheap side-by-side. -side. The upcharge to go to Dynamics DV is a very expensive upgrade. The upgrade to go to the Troy Lee version is an even more expensive upgrade. You don't have to buy this side-by-side. -side. This isn't the side-by-side -side Polaris built for everyone. They built this more to prove what could be done, to, to satisfy those guys who are absolutely bent on having the ultimate, highest end, maximum performance and technology in every gadget. That's who this is for. You should thank Polaris for doing this instead of complaining because the stuff that you're finding on say the new Razer XP that's just been released, that came from this. A lot, of, a lot of those pieces of technology that make that vehicle better came from vehicles like this. It is, it is called the trip, trickle down effect. It is a real thing. And we all benefit from it at every level of the purchasing spectrum. So you don't have to buy, I mean, in Canada, this is a $65,000 side-by-side. The Troy Lee edition is over 70 after you factor taxes in. That's insane, but you don't have to buy it. If you're a guy who wants to buy something to go out in the dunes, and you just don't wanna buy a sand rail for $150,000, guess what? Polaris has got you covered. So there's all kinds of reasons why this vehicle exists, and there's all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't be upset that it exists, okay? So saying, oh, it's crazy where the industry is gone, uh, it is, but it's also good. It's also good in its own way. Um, inflation is a thing. Obviously, even the cheapest vehicles are getting more expensive. There's nothing we can do about that. 
bread is getting more expensive. So why would side-by-sides not? That's not something you can complain about to Polaris, but definitely complaining about a vehicle that's this full jam, this awesome, isn't gonna do anybody any good. So let's just not hear that. Anyway, with that said, I am done. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did like it, make sure you click the like button. That lets us know that we're doing a good job, that we're doing something right, and that we should keep doing it. If you have any comments, definitely leave those comments. We try and read them as much as possible and respond to them as much as possible. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. That makes sure you don't miss anything. We are uploading new videos more than once a week. So there's always new content coming up and I know you guys don't want to miss it. And if you're really bent on not missing it, as soon as it comes out, turn the bell on and you'll get notified as soon as we upload a new video immediately. So to end this segment once and for all, we're going to have to hear it run. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.